Welcome to week one of the second half graduate course, Case Studies and Financial Analysis. This, my name is Diana Block. I'm going to be your online instructor for the next five weeks. And I'm looking forward to working with you. So as we get started in this class, we're going to talk about some case studies and financial analysis. And I want to start off by going through how to actually complete um, or how to begin analyzing a company's financial position. You'll start off with some basic steps and then they will grow depending on what you find and which avenues you feel like you need to pursue. Um, as you uncover information, that'll lead you to additional facts and figures that you'll want to investigate in order to do a complete analysis. But you'll start off kind of in a the same general area with the same general information and then depending on the company, you'll go into different directions. So we're going to talk about how to do the basic financial analysis to get you started. So if you were going to uh, create a uh, analyze the financial status of a company, or let's start off with yourself. If you were or someone was analyzing your financial position, an outsider, such as someone or a bank or financial institution that you were wanting to borrow money from, or if you were trying to convince an investor to invest in you or some project <clears throat> that you're pursuing, what would those investors or creditors want to know about you before they loan you money or invest in you? Well, they will want to know how much you owe and who do you owe. This is important information for someone to know before they uh, put their hard-earned funds or their, invet their uh, shareholders' funds into your hands. They're going to want to know who you've done business with in the past and how those business relationships turned out. Um, if you still owe anyone, are you making your payments on a timely basis? And how much total do you owe out to others? They'd also want to know what assets do you have? Um, is there any valuable items that you own that if something went wrong with this financial transaction, maybe they would be able to confiscate in order to reclaim their investment? So what do you own? What assets do you have? And then what's the value of those assets that you have? So this is going to be the same type of information that you will want to know about a firm that you're interested in investing in or possibly working with or that any creditor would want to know about a firm um, that they are loaning money to or that they're investing in. So it's going to be very similar to um, the things you would think someone would want to know or that you would want to know about someone or a company before you invest your time and efforts in, into that company. So let's start off with the balance sheet. When we're going to analyze the financial status of a company, let's look at some information that will tell us what they owe and, to, um, and what assets they have. And the balance sheet will do that for you. So if you had a prior finance or accounting class, you've probably seen a balance sheet before. But just to kind of review, the balance sheet is the status of the firm's position at a po specific point in time. And the first thing you generally see on the balance sheet is the assets. And it starts off with the current assets. Current assets means those assets that we plan to turn into cash within the next 12 months or the next business cycle. So uh, current assets will include, of course, cash, accounts receivable, prepaid rents, and inventory. And so then underneath the current assets, uh, we will have any long-term assets. And we've got information about long-term assets. This could be uh, buildings and equipment. And so just depending on the firm, you'll see different things here. But you'll see first the current assets, then the long-term assets. And then your total assets will be summarized for you. Then the other side of the balance sheet, you're going to see the liabilities. This side tells you what is owed, um, who the firm owes, and the, well, the amounts that are owed out. So this company has some current liabilities. So current liabilities means those liabilities that have to be paid within the next 12 months. So we see some things like accounts payable and accrued expenses uh, that are part of the current liabilities. 
then there may be some longer term liabilities that will have more than a year before they'll be paid off. The final section is the owner's equity. So the owner's equity is the difference between the total assets and the total liabilities. The difference is the owner's equity in the firm. So using this balance sheet, we can learn a lot of information about the current status as of the uh, period stated um, about this particular firm. So what we will do is use this balance sheet or a balance sheet, you know, for the firms that you're working on in your cases and calculate some ratios. So some of the most basic ratios that you're probably going to want to calculate are things like the current ratio. The current ratio is the total assets minus the current liabilities. Um, actually, that's the current assets. Let me fix that. Current assets divided by the current liabilities. And so when you take the current assets, those are the bills that will, uh, I'm sorry, the amounts that will turn into cash within the next 12 months. And then you divide that by the current liabilities, the bills that will need to be paid over the next 12 months, you'll get a ratio that tells you whether or not you will have enough money coming in to cover your bills. So a current ratio over one is great. That means you have more than enough assets to turn into cash to, pal to cover your current liabilities over the next year. This means that the company uh, is highly likely to be very solvent, uh, not bankrupt over the next year. Um, a current ratio that's less than one means there's possibly not enough cash coming in to cover the current liabilities, which could be a serious problem. You can also use the uh, balance sheet to calculate the book value. Um, and the book value is where you're going to take the total assets and subtract the total liabilities. This is also the owner's equity. So this is the amount of ownership um, that the stockholders have in this firm. Um, this is the amount of the firm's total assets that is not owed out to some creditor. You may also want to compare the market value of the firm, which has to do with their stock price, to the actual book value of the firm. How closely do they correlate what the firm is uh, valued at in the marketplace to what is actually the value in the books? This may be a good ratio to get started with on one of the cases that you'll be working on for this first week. Now, as you do the reading for week one, you're going to come across lots of ratios. You're going to come across uh, in your textbook profitability ratios, efficiency ratios, debt ratios. So there's lots of ratios that you can calculate on a firm, a lot of them using the balance sheet, some of them using a combination of information on the balance sheet and the uh, income statement. So these are that I've listed here are just some of the very basic things to get you started but you'll also calculate a full set of ratios as discussed in your text and see which ones you feel provide you with the most information about the current situation of that firm. You also, in addition to all the ratios that you choose to calculate that are discussed in your text, you're also going to want to look at the bottom line. The bottom line is what we refer to as the net income or the earnings per share. And the uh, bottom line tells us basically whether or not the company was profitable for the, a specific period. Um, so this is going to tell investors or creditors a lot about the general well-being of the firm. Um, and depending on what that bottom line number is, again, you may tie some of that information back to the ratios that you've calculated to give you a better understanding of what's going on in that firm. So this week is all about ratio analysis. You want to complete uh, or prepare a complete set of ratios as they're discussed in your chapter, uh, your reading for this week, and evaluate which of them are, say, out of whack or lack of a better term, which of them kind of indicate to you the potential problems in uh, the firms that we're discussing. And you'll want to talk about what those ratios are saying to you 
and possibly what some of the trends are in those ratios. So that'll get you started on analyzing financial status. Make sure that you review all of the additional videos in the additional resources area of the week one content. There's lots of videos in there that are going to help you get started on all the specific types of ratios and how to calculate them. Um, if you have any questions, I hope that you will certainly contact me and uh, talk to me freely in the discussion areas about the cases that we're working on. Just to uh, get us all on the same page, I'd like to transition now into some housekeeping items related to the actual class itself and how it's going to be handled. So I want to point out to you the late policy that is posted in the classroom. It basically says that you can submit work up to three days late, but it is going to be an automatic 50% point reduction. After those three days, there's no late work accepted. And of course, that late policy of the three-day grace period only applies to the first four weeks. The final week, all work must be completed by the last day of the quarter uh, on Thursday of week five. So hopefully, everything will go very smoothly over the next five weeks, and there won't be any situations that will interfere with your ability to submit your work on time. But if this does come up, you know, it happens occasionally, at least we will know in advance how late work is going to be handled and how much time you have to deal with that. I also want to point out to you my office hours. I am going to be available uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and, th and Thursdays from 3 to 4.30. If you want to uh, instant chat with me on Blackboard IM, I'm going to be available there. And, or you can just email me or call me during those hours as well. And if I'm not on the phone with another student, I'll be able to talk to you immediately or return your call immediately. Um, emails will always be answered within 24 hours, usually the same day, no matter what time of the day or night you send it. I actually check my emails all the time. So um, you'll always get a response within 24 hours, but usually much less, much faster than that. So if you have any questions, I hope you feel free to contact me um, through whatever means works best for you, whether that be email or phone or through the Blackboard IM when I'm available on there. And uh, I just look forward to getting to know you all and talking with you and working with you through the rest of this winter 2014 quarter. Or actually, this is the fall, the fall 2014 quarter of uh, this graduate level course. So have a great week and I look forward to talking with you more.